Today on All Things 80s, it's Duran Duran versus Spando Belly. Welcome back to All Things 80s. Now, Duran Duran or Spando Belly? That was the question being asked across playgrounds in the UK in the early 1980s. And today we are going to get the definitive answer to that question. Now, back then in the 80s, pop bands were very much like football teams in as much as you could only be a fan of one. You were either with Duran Duran or you were with Spando Ballet. There was no middle ground. Now, it does seem quite appropriate to be doing this video at Christmas time, as you can see, because it was exactly 35 years ago that the two bands faced off on a special Christmas edition of Mike Reed's Pop Quiz, which was shown on the BBC back in 1984. And for the record, Duran Duran won that contest. Now, to make my decision on who is the best fair, I've compiled a bunch of head-to-head -head rounds and the winner of each round will receive one point and at the end we'll tally the points and the band with the most points shall be declared the best of the two. So for round one we're going to start at the very beginning and look at the debut singles. Now in 1980 Spando Ballet gave us the single to cut a long story short and one year later Duran Duran gave us Planet Earth. Now, while the videos for both songs highlight the extremely dodgy fashions of the time, uh, it has to be said that Duran Duran come off looking slightly less ridiculous. But onto the music itself, both are prime examples of the new romantic sound of the time. However, this is 2019 and having listened to them both quite extensively, I have to say that Planet Earth has aged far better than the Spandau effort. That's not to say it's a terrible song, it's actually an excellent song, but it just has not aged as well. So purely on that standpoint, I'm going to give this point to Duran Duran for having the better of the two debut singles. Round two is the signature single. Now what do I mean by signature single? Basically it's when that song comes on the radio, that's the song that you identify most with that band. Now in the case of Spandau Ballet, it's gold. And for Duran Duran, it's real. Both are absolute classic 80s pop songs. And picking one to be better than the other is not easy, but I do have to award this point to Duran Duran, simply because the song Rio has all the elements of a, an amazing 80s pop song. We have the arpeggiated synth sequence. We've got beautiful chorus on the guitars. And of course, the bass line for Rio is probably the greatest bass line in all of 80s pop. That's not to say that Gold is a bad song, it certainly isn't, it's a fantastic track, but if I'm being objective, I do have to give this point once again to Duran Duran. So round three, we're looking at the ballads from both bands. So for this, we're gonna face off Duran Duran Save a Prayer with True by Spando Bally. Now, when I listen to Save a Prayer, the first thing that comes into my mind are those beautiful Sri Lankan landscapes which just tie in with the song absolutely perfectly. And when I listen to True by Spandau Ballet, it just takes me back to the time I first heard that song on Top of the Pops, just a small lad at the time. Now one has to be the winner. It's not easy, but I am giving this point to Spandau Ballet simply because the song True is so well written so well performed and it has the most beautiful vocal from Tony Hadley. I should not take anything away from Duran Duran because that is a fantastic song, slow paced song. It's stood the test of time and is still a fan's favourite to this day live in concert. But for this round, the point is definitely going to Spandau Ballet. Round four is the comeback single. Now whilst this doesn't really relate to the 80s, it's a good gauge of how well these bands have aged. So back in 2009, Spando Ballet came back at us with a single called One More Time. Now for me, this was a real letdown. The song itself is decent. It just didn't really grab my attention and left me thinking, I just want to hear the 80s stuff. 
Duran Duran, however, came back in 2004 with the single Reach Up For The Sunrise, which in contrast was a classic sounding Duran Duran song. So much so that it remains a fan's favourite in concerts to this day. And when performed live, it's one of their sort of rockier numbers. It's, it's a fantastic track, a good positive message behind it. And for that reason, Duran Duran win this round. Round five is looks versus talent. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each corresponding band member and compare their musical ability against their looks. Now, in terms of judging musical ability, I have no issues doing that. I think I'm reasonably well versed that I can give a good uh, opinion on that. However, judging looks of the men is something I'm not qualified to do, given that I am of straight persuasion and I am indeed married to a lady. So I'm going to use the Smash Hits readers polls, a couple of classic Smash Hits here, to give me an idea of where things stand as far as looks go. And for that, I'll be using the poll which was entitled Most Fanciable Male. So first up, we have Simon Le Bon versus Tony Hadley. Now, in terms of musical ability, I'm giving this point straight away to Tony Hadley. He had the most amazing soulful voice with a pretty decent range. Simon Le Bon, on the other hand, has a good voice for Duran Duran. But in general terms, he is not what you would call a great singer. In terms of looks, however, this point goes straight to Simon Le Bon, purely from the point that he was always in the top five in the Smash Hits readers' polls, most fanciable men, whereas Tony Hadley never once made the top ten. Next up, we're looking at the bass players, John Taylor versus Martin Kemp. Straight up, the point for musical ability goes to John Taylor. He is the best bass player of the two, and in fact, he is the best bass player, period. You listen to any Duran Duran song and just listen out for those bass lines. They are absolutely fantastic. Prime example, of course, being Rio. In terms of looks, um, this was, well, it wasn't difficult at all because John Taylor was always voted number one most fanciable male back in the 80s which is unfortunate that Martin Kemp was up against John Taylor because according to the results in these readers' polls, Martin Kemp was always the most fanciable member of Spandau Ballet. However, being up against John Taylor, he stood no chance. So both points in this round go to John Taylor. On to guitarists. So we have Andy Taylor versus Gary Kemp. For musical ability, I have to give this point to Gary Kemp because he was the primary songwriter of Spandau Ballet. And when you listen to their back catalogue, there's no question this guy can write a damn good song. Um, for me personally, Andy Taylor was my favourite member of Duran Duran because obviously I wasn't into them because of their looks. I was into them because of their songs. And I particularly enjoyed Andy Taylor's kind of rock persona both in terms of his guitar sound and his whole sort of rock star vibe with the you know the long hair, the sunglasses, the beer, the cigarette. I thought that was cool. In terms of looks, um, Andy Taylor never made it into the top 10 of the most fanciable males back in the 80s when all four of his other bandmates always did. So I've always kind of felt bad for him on that aspect. Uh, Gary Kemp was never once voted into the top 10 either. But in, just in terms of overall looks, I'm giving it to Andy Taylor because, like I said, he was a real rock star in a pop band. So it's one point each. On to the drummers now. So we have Roger Taylor of Duran Duran, not to be confused with Roger Taylor of Queen, of course, against John Keeble from Spandau Ballet. Musical ability, the point goes to John Keeble simply from the fact that he seems to do a lot more behind his kit than Roger Taylor does. Roger Taylor is a solid drummer. Uh, he's not at all spectacular, and he keeps his fills to the bare minimum, whereas John Keeble is far more of an expressive uh, drummer. Looks, clearly this one goes to Roger Taylor because he was consistently in the top 10 most fanciable men, and... Uh, John Keeble was nowhere to be seen in those polls. So that's one point each in terms of the drummers. 
To round things out, we're going to have Steve Norman face up against Nick Rhodes. Now this is probably not a fair comparison given that both guys do completely different things in each band. But as we've already compared like with like, we have to go ahead and match these two guys off against each other. Now in terms of musical ability, Nick Rhodes is probably not an amazing musician. He is, however, a genius at creating sounds and layers. And some of his uh, sequence work in the early Duran Duran stuff is absolutely amazing. Steve Norman, however, wears many caps in Spandau Ballet. He's done guitar, percussion, sax, and purely for that alone, I'm going to give the point on musicianship to Steve Norman. As for looks, uh, Nick Rhodes was consistently in the top 10 most fanciable men, which I found quite strange given that his, his appearance was extremely effeminate, shall we say. Um, if I was, you know, to take a step back and be completely impartial about this, I think Steve Norman is probably a better looking guy, but that's not for me to say. So this point for looks goes to Nick Rhodes. That's one point each. Round six, we're looking at number one singles and number one albums. Now, believe it or not, but Duran Duran only ever managed two number one singles. The first in 1983 was Is There Something I Should Know? And they repeated that feat one year later with The Reflex. Spandau Ballet, however, only managed one number one single, and that was the single True, which peaked at number one in 1983. So Duran Duran get a point for that. Album-wise, both bands only ever had one number one album. Both in 1983, Spandau hit the top with the album True, and Duran Duran hit the top spot in 83 with the album Seven and the Ragged Tiger. So they're tied there, so there's no points given for album number ones. Duran Duran win a point for the fact they had two number one singles. Round seven is the videos. So who had the best videos? Uh, Duran Duran did, no question, hands down. Duran Duran had some of the best music videos of the 1980s. And in fact, it almost seemed as if Spandau Ballet were always one step behind. If you look at the video for Gold, it's like a mashup of Duran Duran's videos for Hungry Like the Wolf and Union of the Snake. And the video for Highly Strung was more than a little bit inspired by Rio. So clearly Duran Duran win the point for the best music videos. So lastly, here we are at round eight, which I've called Name Recognition. Now, when you think about 80s pop from the UK, what name springs to mind? For me, it has to be Duran Duran. And in fact, names like Wham and Adam and the Ants come to my mind before Spandau Ballet. Uh, maybe you think differently, let me know down below, but for this final round, I am giving that one point to Duran Duran. So now that we've been through all eight rounds, and if you were keeping score, you would realize that Duran Duran scored 12, while Spandau Ballet only managed five points. So it's pretty clear that from this head-to-head -head, uh, matchup, Duran Duran are by far the better of the two bands, which of course is my opinion. If you think differently, please comment below and start the discussion. So I thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do like, please do subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video looking at all things 80s. Thank you.